Waterfowl. That in itself is quite the interesting group of birds. Some are already familiar with them, while some are not, which is understandable of course. Not everyone is an avian enjoyer after all, but let's just do a pretest for fun. Which of these animals don't belong here? I'll give you 10 seconds, but feel free to pause if you want to think about it. If you answer number 3, then congratulations. You are absolutely wrong. Unfortunately, it's number 2. Number 2 is a grief, but whoa, 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 wait a second. Am I really telling you that this is not a waterfowl? Well, this is a waterfowl? Well, yeah, I am telling you that. This bird is a screamer, quite literally, behavior wise and name wise. So, let me bring up the question. What exactly is screamer? First of all, of course, screamer is a bird. And yeah, they are waterfowls. Just to be clear, waterfowl is the common name for the Anseriformes order, which includes geese, ducks, swans, and relatives. Those that I mentioned are classified in the Anatidae family, while screamers are classified in the Anhimidae family, taken from Anhima which is their name in Tupi language. Actually, let's pause for a bit and let me clarify about something. Those who learn classic Latin might be confused about why I'm pronouncing this as they, while the correct pronunciation should be die. You know, same as how this name is supposed to be pronounced Julius Caesar. Well, the answer is simply because, based on my experience in my academic life, if I pronounce this as die, Many people were confused about what I'm talking about. Some thought I'm talking about order level, which have the suffix ida, etc. So I have been pronouncing it day because more people would get what I mean. But when I think about it, maybe it's fine to use the correct pronunciation in my video because I can just write the name on the screen to avoid confusion, right? But anyway, there are two valid extant genera in this family, which are Anhima and Kauna. Anhima is like I explained earlier, and for Kauna, I'm not entirely sure, to be honest. Kaunos is Greek for silly or perhaps loose, but do they look silly to you? Maybe? I don't know. Let's just move on. There is only one species in the Anhima genus, which is Anhima cornuta, the horn screamer, and cornuta itself means horn. The genus Kauna has two species, Kauna cavaria, the northern screamer, and Kauna torquata, the southern screamer. If you look at them side by side, it's quite easy to tell them apart, but I'll make it obvious in the morphology section. All of them can only be found in South America, naturally at least. Horn screamer can be found in northern South America. Northern screamer can only be found in northern Colombia and Venezuela. Meanwhile, Southern Screamer can be found in Southern South America, but not the absolute South though. And that's their distribution. Now, let's talk about their morphology. Morphologically speaking, Screamers are very different compared to the duck family. Screamers' feet barely have any webbings and they don't have the typical duck bill of the duck family. Even so, they still have the typical lamellae, these teeth-like structure, which is also found in the duck family. Adult screamers are typically around 80 to 90 centimeters long. Their body is stout and they have a relatively long leg. This, combined with a relatively small head, makes them somewhat foul looking. You know, like guinea fowl. Another interesting fact about them is the presence of a spur on each of their wings. This spur is even more noticeable than Hodgson's claw because it's relatively big and protruding and also the fact that they retain the spur throughout their life, of course. Now let's talk about the difference between the three species. Horn screamers are very easy to tell. They have horn, quite literally. This is an actual cornified structure, not just an accessory feather. This horn grows from their skull. And yeah, that's the genus Anhima. The two species in the genus Kauna don't have this horn. Now, if we look at the two Kauna, how I usually differentiate between the two is by looking at their quote-unquote color. Northern Screamer has a white-black color. In comparison, 
Southern Screamer has a narrow black collar. With that information, you could easily tell those three apart. That's if we're talking about the adults though. Their chick has the typical yellowish feather of waterfowl, so it's difficult to identify without identifying their parent. Anyway, next, let's talk about their lifestyle. But before that, Even though they look like a runner, they still prefer wet habitat just like other waterfowls. They live in marshes, lagoons, swamps, riverbanks, and lakes. They are also good swimmers, even though they prefer to chill on land. Oh, and they could also fly of course. Screamers are non-migratory, and they tend to stay near their water body throughout their life. They mostly feed on water plants. That includes the stems, leaves, and seeds. However, they are not strictly herbivorous. They can also eat arthropods, albeit rarely. They are not exactly a social bird, but because they tend to stick to where they are born, several individuals can and will live closely together. They form a long-term pair, lasting for a life in some cases. During breeding season, they are quite territorial. They fight each other with their spurs. They make their nests with plant materials. They can lay around 3 to 7 eggs, and both parents exhibit parental care. Eggs will hatch after around 40 days, and chicks stick to their parent. After 2-3 to three months, fledging start, and they become independent around 2 weeks later. In case you are wondering, they are called screamer because they make loud screaming noises. Let me play the sound for you. This one is horn screamer's call. <coughs> This one is Northern Screamer's call. And this one is Southern Screamer's call. Oh and also, if you're wondering why the horn screamers have horn, I don't think we actually have a generally accepted consensus yet. This horn is relatively brittle. They snap quite easily, but they do regrow of course. Still. The fact that it's not a strong structure indicates that it's probably not a weapon. Like I said earlier, they use their spurs as weapons, so they don't exactly need a horn for that. Another theory to consider is it serves an ornamental purpose. This will be obvious if only the males or females have this structure. But no, all individuals have this structure, regardless of sexes. So yeah, we don't exactly know for sure why they develop this structure. But let me know if you have an interesting idea. Anyway, before ending this video, I want to talk about their evolution for a bit. We barely have any fossil records of screamers. Well, to be fair, it's quite difficult to find bird fossils in general. However, an interesting fossil to consider is the presbyornithids. In terms of body form, presbyornithids are quite similar to wader birds but they have duck-like bill and webbed feet. That's why presbyornithids are considered to be a basal waterfowl. The oldest presbyornithid fossil was found dating back to late Cretaceous, while the oldest screamer fossil dates back to Miocene, or at least very late Oligocene. That's way later than the oldest presbyornithid fossil. That's why some theorize that screamers evolved from presbyornithid. But that would mean reverting from duck bill to a regular bill and losing the web, which is not impossible of course, but that raised some question. The reversion of beak shape can be explained by the shift from filter feeding lifestyle to herbivory. There are some more questions to be answered, but we'll have to wait for some more fossils to be found. Another evidence that supports grouping screamers together with waterfowl is, as always, molecular analysis. Phylogenetics. They are the outgroup of this order, hence they are considered to be the basal anseriform. In 2023, a basal anseriform fossil was found dating back to late Paleocene, which is even earlier than the Caunoides fossil. This fossil shows a similar cranial morphology to Presbyornis, but a regular beak like in screamers. So, what does this tell us? Well, not sure about that to be honest. More questions spawned from this discovery. Which traits are basal? And which one is the rift? Who knows? 
let's hope for even more fossils. More information on them would be cool too, of course. Maybe we'll eventually find the answer lying behind Horn Screamer's horn. But for now, let's just learn what is known. And that's all for now. Oh, by the way, it's kind of funny how the anatomic image of the Horn Screamer's horn in this video is obtained from a publication on Sitakosaurus tail bristle. That's also a nice read in itself. But anyway, enjoy your day.